Um, the Houston Texans quarterback, I don't know if you heard about this, Deshaun Watson, you know, he's pretty much been putting up a lot of fuss. He wants to be traded. And now a couple of days ago now, about six different uh, instances of sexual assault have now came out about Deshaun Watson. And I know it's limited information for all of us, but what is your gut feeling telling you now that this situation is now is it before the world now? Man, it, it's, it is awfully coincidental that this these allegations occur right when he's, you know, being very vocal. Um, I hope that there's nothing sinister going on, but you never know. You never know. Um, in terms of whether or not he did it, you you don't know that either. Uh, you know, I, I believe in evidence. I believe in proof, you know, and uh, and the fact that and until I see proof, I'm not going to go and agree to ruin a person's life. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry that, you know, if you did get down with him sexually, you know, and you feel like you were forced to do it, the best I can do is say, OK, well, maybe we get you some counseling or teach you how to how to fight back or how to walk away or what. You know, I'm not saying that I'm not belittling the experience of the person on the other side. But but the problem, the thing we want to get away from is getting to the point where we start treating women like they're little children. Like, you know, like if a, if a woman makes a decision to get with a man and then later on says, well, I only did it because he told me that I had to do it. Well, it doesn't mean that didn't happen. It just means we don't know. And, and, and remember that when you're talking about something as serious as rape, you're talking about sending somebody to prison where they might get raped. You know? yeah. So, I, you know, right. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take a move that make a move that serious until I'm 100 percent sure. And uh, and so so, you know, I, I think with Deshaun, I, I hope that that's not the case. Uh, we know of examples of, of of men going over over the overboard when it comes to women. It's not out of the question. But until there's proof and evidence, I'm not I'm not interested in moving on any of that. You know, the other thing, too, is that the other thing that, that I think undermines the credibility of any accuser is that, you know, you're, you're not talking about going after a random guy. You're going after a guy that had that's made, you know, one hundred million dollars or whatever. So the possibility of a shakedown must be considered because everybody knows the most vulnerable entity in America is a black man. And so if you accuse a black man of anything, a lot of black men will pay you millions of dollars just to make you stop accusing him. And that right there is a predatory act within itself. So so while we can certainly and should talk about predatory behavior on the part of black men toward other people, we must talk about the way black men are preyed upon, particularly when they're in those positions of power and prominence and wealth. Lastly, I think that just brother to brother is very important that we as black men have an awareness that, that people are out to get you. You yep. know, there, um, I heard this lady, this lady called me. Uh, OK, check this out. I wrote a story maybe 12 years ago, a long time ago uh, in AOL Black Voices about Lawrence Taylor getting caught up with that young girl. You remember that? Yep. Yeah, I, don't, I remember that now, but he He's got young, but yeah. and he hooked because I guess he liked the, the hookers and stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wrote an article about it. And I got a call from a woman who knew that girl. And, and basically, she told me the most fascinating story I'd ever heard in my life. I'll never forget it. I, I mean, my jaw dropped in the kitchen as I'm listening to her tell this story. And it sounded very credible to me. And she basically said that that these that the, the, this group of girls, they will research, you know, rappers and athletes and ballers that come into town. And they would figure out what they like and how to basically trap them. You know, she said that they they would just they knew you know what what you like to drink, what you like to talk about. They knew what kind of girls you like if you if you were more likely to get with a jump off or not, and they would plant that girl in front of you. They had fake IDs, like they were like the CIA man. They and so what they would do is they would lure the guy back to like a hotel and they would give him a drink, like hey baby, drink this. And so a lot of guys like oh you a cute little thing, like I'm just do whatever you tell me, right? So they would drink it and they would uh, they would be knocked out because they would put something in their drink, and while the guy was asleep. They were they had a 15 year old. Now she had a fake ID, so they didn't even know she was underage, but they would put her in the bed with the guy and take pictures. And then when the guy woke up, they would say, We got these pictures of you in the bed with an underage girl. And if you don't give us ten thousand dollars, it was like it was like ghetto extortion. It wasn't like no million dollars enough. They would ask for like 10 grand. Right. Very specific. She said they would ask for ten thousand dollars. They said, if you don't give us ten thousand dollars, we will send these pictures to your your team, to the media, and to your wife. And most of, and most of the guys paid up. Her yeah, claim yeah. was that Lawrence uh, La Lawrence um, Taylor, you know, yeah, Lawrence Taylor. Thank you. That yep. Lawrence Taylor was the guy who said, "F you, I'm not paying." So next thing you know, the little girl sitting next to Gloria, all red in tears, saying, "Look at what this man did to me." Now again, 
this is what this was what her story was. I just, I'm just sharing what was told to me, and honestly, it sounded very credible. Yeah. 